local standing committees are now um, available, able to meet again in person. Um, meetings are taking place before and after the general membership meeting. If that time is not convenient for your committee, please contact Linda Layton to see for room availability and time. Uh, Port Elgin, the Port the Pell applications have all been completed for the fall session. If you're attending Pell when you're on layoff and in receipt of EI, sub, or imp, you will need to fill out um, 40 hours lost time and, and enter your gross earnings. Uh, if you need assistance or more information, please contact one of our three benefit reps. The names will be listed, numbers will be listed below. And also, Unifor National will be your employer for that week at Port Elgin, and their information will also be available below this. A COVID-19 COVID update. Southwest Public Health is continuing to hold COVID-19 vaccine clinics here at the hall on every Tuesday from 9.30 to 3.30. The only change going forward is that you now have to have an appointment to uh, get your vaccine. In closing, on behalf of the leadership of Unifor Local 88, I hope everyone had a safe and happy summer. Um, please take care and be safe when you're driving and watch for all the children as school is taken back in. We hope to see you soon when Bright Drop product starts up. Hello and welcome to our September video. I want to start off with the contract books. The new contract books are now in. Um, here's what they look like. They are green for the next three years. Uh, they just came in on Monday. We have posted an electronic copy on our website. We handed them out at the open house on Tuesday for the members that did show up. Um, and we will hand them out when people return to work. If you really want to book now, feel free to stop by the union office and we will uh, gladly hand you one. Uh, the next topic is a 4% bonus. We had hoped to have this issue resolved by now, uh, but we have been waiting for over a month to hear from the head office for GM. We want to make sure that those people collecting EI, sub, and imp will have no negative effect on receiving their 4% bonus. Um, to clarify, the bonus goes back 12 months from September 26th, so we are actually still in the one-year working period. The payment would then be made around mid-October. It only counts for wages earned. It does not count for sub uh, or EI or money we make during layoffs. Um, if GM cannot guarantee there'll be no negative effect, we are asking that the payment be delayed until the new year when we're all back to work. We have no problem with trades or any production people that are currently working getting paid. Uh, they can certainly pay those people, but if they cannot um, guarantee that there won't be a, p a penalty for taking the money now, then we are asking for the money to be delayed until the new year. It's hard enough already to get enough money during the layoffs. Um, we, we hope to have this resolved by last week, but we are still working our way through this. Um, returns to works. This is likely the biggest question that we have been getting. Uh, when are we going to be returned to work? There is a tentative plan. Please remember that this can change. It is only tentative. This can change very quickly, but this is what we have as of right now. They would like all the team leaders to return to work for one week. This is likely going to happen late October or early November and only for one week. You'll start doing some training, some high voltage training, things like that for one week, setting up your stations. Um, they hope to bring all the production people back to work starting the first week of December. Again, very tentative. The plan right now would be to rotate shifts. So we're going to bring back for this example, let's say A shift for two weeks. We would also bring back half of C shift with A shift. They would work for two weeks and then go home and then B shift would come in and work for two weeks with the other half of C shift. So all three shifts would get the same amount of hours, same amount of pay. Uh, that's the hope. Um, they are also hoping to go two shifts by March. So this would be a very short lived plan and then everybody would come back. We have lots of vacation to burn. We have lots of training, so there won't actually be a lot of extra bodies floating around. There'll be lots of work for everyone. Uh, one of the next biggest questions we are getting is ESA. I want to explain this so everyone understands it very clearly. By Ontario law, ESA, Employment Standards Act, states that you are, if you are laid off greater than 35 weeks in a 52-week period, you have the right to leave your company with termination pay. You can also elect to retire if you're retirement eligible. We currently have about 130 members signed up uh, on this program to either retire or leave the company upon reaching their 35 weeks. If you are on that list, we will call you around week 33 or 34 and inform you of their approaching deadline so you can do your paperwork. Anyone can opt in or out of this program at any time. You just need to let us know. We are not gonna call everyone just the people who have signed up through the HR or ER department um, 
and right now there's about 130 of you. We update this list, this list monthly on our website to show where everybody in our membership is at according to the 35-week um, countdown. Uh, the next topic that's come up this week uh, pretty heavily is the trade's bank time. In the contract, letter 50 is titled bank time. It should have actually been titled production bank time. We missed that. That is, not a, that is not a slight against the trades. It is intentional. We do have a letter on the skilled trades bank time. It is based on working Sundays. When a production person takes bank time, a TPT covers their position. It's a win-win both for the company and the member. It is a volunteer program, so if you want more time off, the company can bring in cheaper labor to do your job, thus creating a TPT. At one time, we worked six days a week for eight years. Our bargaining committee came up with the idea of bank time and how to make it work, and it was a great success. But regarding the trades, we do not have a trades TPT or a pool of, cheap, of cheaper trades to draw from. The more trades use the bank time, it forces the company to allow more trades off work. The more trades that are off work, the more we prove to the company that we can run with less trades. It creates a huge problem. We are always yelling for work, so additional time off via the bank time hampers those arguments. We will not find cheaper trades to cover our trades for a bank time program. In fact, our, current, our trades currently make $45 an hour, and we can't retain them. We are never going to find new trades who will work for less money. GM has been so cheap for over a decade, and now it's coming back to haunt them. The Detroit 3 bargain next year, and let's be honest, $50 an hour isn't going to attract new tradespeople. We are losing tradespeople. Oshawa is trying to create a third shift for their trades, and our wages are, nearly, are not nearly attractive enough. At one time, nobody ever quit a Detroit 3 job. Now trades and production cannot attract the people we need to keep running. If we do hire someone, we can't seem to keep retaining them as well. At one time, we helped set the bar for wages in this province, both in the area of trades and production. But GM and the rest of the auto industry have become so cheap and only worry about their shareholders and not sharing the billions that they make every year with the people who make them that money. Who right now in 2022 is going to apply for an eight-year grow-in job? Every mom and pop shop is offering greater than $45 an hour to, for trades, and that's working straight days. You can't buy groceries for your family on one day's pay, and you can't even fill up your pickup truck for one day's pay. Our previous plant manager offered to pay our skilled trades $5 an hour more, effective immediately. Um, for everything she screwed up, at least she understood the importance of trying to retain your skill base. She did tell me a few days later that HUD office wouldn't allow her to pay the extra money. $5 is almost $1,000 a month in extra money. That equals close to $12,000 annually, or at least matches what profit sharing is paid in the US. Now there's a thought we've beat into them for the last couple of contracts. Anyhow, enough of that rant. Everyone knows that after over a decade of very limited gains, we have to start making significant headway and get some money into our members' pockets of this next round of bargaining. On a positive note, I would like to thank everyone who took part in the open house yesterday. I thought it was great by the leadership team at CAMI to take the time and allow our members on layoff the opportunity to see firsthand the retooling that is coming along. There was much positive feedback as many are hoping to get back to work as soon as possible and it's very exciting to see all the changes taking place. We will continue to see the, uh, we will continue to update the members as changes occur, especially in, in areas of timelines for returning to work. The best news is our trucks are being very well received. They need to be built, and GM wants them to be built on time. There could be delays. This is a huge undertaking. Throw in COVID and parts issues, but the leadership team at CAMI are pushing hard to get us up and running. At some point next year, we will have three shifts and likely be six days a week. Enjoy the extra time with your family right now, because in the not-too-distant future, it's going to be all hands on deck. Thank you and take care.